You know, as an automotive journalist, it's always something special to see manufacturers taking your ideas and constructive criticisms and actually putting them on the production line. And you know, last year I was testing a certain small pickup truck that I felt well, it needed a little bit of a helping hand. It wasn't quite as extreme as what its manufacturer was branding it out to be. But you know what, for this year, they've taken all those ideas and boy, have they ran with them. What's good ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to another car review here on the driveway where this week I'd like to welcome you to what should be a pretty special edition of the 2022 Toyota Tacoma. Now as I mentioned I did actually drive one of these trucks last year for 2021 but as I said it wasn't as extreme as what its namesake made it out to be and what we're sitting in right now is the new and improved version of that exact same truck. This is the 22 Tacoma SR5 trail edition. Basically what Toyota has done is they've taken a lower level Tacoma and bolted on so many bits that it's like a baby TRD Pro. A lot of off-road goodies, it should be more capable off-road. I mean that's what their focus is about, off-road prowess on a budget. And speaking of that, a base SR5 will run you about 35 and a half grand if you want one. And you know, they're not half bad trucks to drive. You know, I think they're actually pretty decent. Overall, I think they're a great package when they're put together right. But speaking of put together, with all the options on this one here, this one comes to about 44 and a half grand. So definitely an up hike in price, but there is quite a lot to talk about. And the first thing I wanna discuss is how it drives. What is so funny guys is the fact that with all the cars I've been driving in recent times it feels like it's been absolutely forever since the last time I drove a pickup truck of any kind I mean yeah I drive them every day for work but I'm talking about feeling like a pickup truck owner for more than just a few minutes and driving around in this Tacoma I'm reminded that driving a pickup truck makes you feel like you have a little more presence on the road even if you drive something smaller like this you know, when you drive it, everything feels beefy. It feels more rugged. It doesn't feel as kind of limp-wristed and easy to drive like your mid-sized family four-door that your neighbor might have. Everything about this Tacoma, especially now being the trail edition with the proper rugged off-road goodies that Toyota has thrown at it, I mean, this feels, and this is dead honest truth, it feels something like a TRD Pro. And I'm probably gonna say that again at some point soon. It is just so rugged feeling. And yeah, it doesn't have the biggest engine in the world. What do you expect? Three and a half liter Atkinson Cycle V6 with an aging six-speed transmission, which is the only one that Toyota seems to have that can hold the torque of the uh, smaller engine that we have here. But it's four-wheel drive, so that does equate to something. I mean, it's got a pretty decent towing capacity and a half-decent payload. And you get some pretty other cool goodies like uh, power transmission or power steering cooler. You have an automatic transmission cooler. You have an engine oil cooler and a locking rear diff. And although it only produces about 278 horsepower, just a shade over 260 foot-pounds of torque, I mean, for what it's worth, it's not a bad truck to drive. Now, of course, if you like that rough and tumble kind of lifestyle and driving your pickup truck every day to and from work and wherever else you need to go, well, the one downside you're gonna have is fuel economy. And there is no getting around it. The V6 four-wheel drive Tacoma rates in at a meager 18 in the city and 22 on the highway. Now you can of course increase that if you get the V6 with only two wheel drive, that's 19 in the city, 24 on the highway. So a little bit better, but I think the best is if you were to buy a base model Tacoma with a four cylinder engine, possibly even a manual transmission, and I know that's probably gonna boost you into the mid to the upper 20s. So, I mean, 
The question is, do you suck it up and suck down the gas and get all the options you want, or do you just go with a base model and basically just feel, I don't know, drab? Now, even though I was just comparing this thing to a TRD Pro, which is basically the best of the best that you can buy from the Tacoma family, one thing that is a little concerning with this SR5 base trail edition is, well, <laughs> as you can see going over railroad tracks, the ride is not necessarily the best. I mean, off-road, it feels fantastic. This thing can chew up the dirt like you wouldn't believe. And even though I live in a total concrete jungle out here in the wilds of North Houston, well, I've still been able to find some off-terrain kind of paths here and there. But I mean, just driving it on the tarmac at everyday speeds, you know, 50, 60 miles an hour, you hit any kind of a bump and you feel it, but it doesn't have the refined kind of suspension travel that you might get in something, again, like a TRD Pro, which usually has the Fox Racing suspension, which is always built for off-road and somehow provides a little bit more comfort when you're out on the asphalt. You know, another thing that seems to have crept up during the week that I've had this thing is that if you are over six feet tall, like I am, or perhaps you're looking for the roomiest truck on the market, this is not going to be it. I mean, yeah, it's not as small as say a Ford Maverick, but it is still, well, it's cramped to say the least. Now I know you can still fit an over six foot tall person in here, but the only way I've been able to accomplish that is pulling this giant steering wheel all the way out and also putting the seat as far back as I can. And the steering wheel itself is giant. It's the size of the Texas Star Ferris wheel. And with that said, I don't like to rest my foot on the dead pedal. I more so like to rest it, you know, higher up, kind of with my knee facing me a little bit. So the floor sitting up as high as it is and with such a big steering wheel and a smaller cabin, well, there's not much wiggle room between this big old steering wheel and, uh, and this plastic door panel sitting here beside me. And as kind of a final note while we're out driving this thing right now, one thing that I've actually had on my mind and sort of something I would definitely pitch to Toyota is considering that they have done such a giant update to the Tundra in its massive lifespan from 2014 until now, one thing I'm wondering is when Toyota is possibly going to give this thing the benefit of a small bit of electric power. I'm talking about hybridizing it because obviously, as I said, it's not very efficient. And even though the new Tundra being as big as it is, you know, still produces the power output that it does, I could only imagine how much better the Tacoma could actually be if you gave it a proper transmission in the middle and you gave it a hybridized powertrain. I mean, think about it, more pulling power, probably a better payload, certainly a good bit more power and definitely a good bit more efficiency. So knowing that that's the way we're moving in this day and age and as I've repeated before with gas prices being what they are I'm honestly wondering how much time do we have left before the Tacoma goes hybrid but you know until that day comes one thing I am going to enjoy is the noise this thing makes Oh yeah, it is a little bit sluggish to kind of get up to speed with only six gears in its arsenal, but this one has the TRD exhaust on it and it has the TRD air intake up under the hood as well, which both of those are optional extras. They don't come standard, just so you know. But you know, for 45 grand, there or thereabouts, it still feels like there's something missing. But you know what's not missing, especially after Toyota got their hands on this thing for this year, is the looks. Alrighty guys, now we're talking. This is the part I could not wait to show you. This thing looks so much more aggressive compared to how it did last year. First of all, sitting here in the army green with the bronze accents on things like the wheels, you've got the heritage grill here sitting up front. Now this thing looks so much more like a baby TRD Pro. You've got Toyota spelt out across the grill, also accented in bronze, just so much more of a meaner and aggressive appearance. It looks like it's ready to chew up anything 
everything that nature has to throw at it. A couple of complaints I have though, I wish the headlights were actually smoked out on this particular one. I think it would have looked better with the uh, uh, against the green. I think the chrome is a little too much for me. And also being an SR5, you have halogen high and low beams and incandescent turn signals up front. And one thing that is missing from this one that was on the last Tacoma that I drove is the set of Rigid Industries LED fog lights. I think on this one, now that Toyota has changed it from sort of a mundane look to a much more off-road ready appearance, I think that would have completed the front of it all the same. Now, although the Tacoma is not as big and bulky as something like its older sister, the Tundra, this is by all accounts a very sizable pickup. And of course, length can depend on how you configure things like what type of cab you've got, or whether you choose the five foot bed like I have on this one, or you opt for the longer six foot bed. With this configuration I have here, you're looking at 212.3 inches from nose to tail. Now, before we continue on, one thing I must note, if you want to get the trail edition, you must take into consideration a couple of things. You can only get it with the six cylinder engine, you can only get it as a double cab, and you can only get it in four wheel drive, which if you wanted a trail edition truck with two wheel drive, I would honestly question your integrity because an off-road ready truck like this only needs four wheel drive. And you also might be noticing that it sits a little bit higher compared to the one that I reviewed last year. That's because the trail edition raises things up a little bit by just over an inch in the front. So you now have 10 and a half inches of ground clearance up front and right around 10 inches of ground clearance in the back, thanks to about a half inch height difference back here. Now, if you wanna talk about off-road specific, take a look down here. I mentioned it earlier, but these wheels are sick. 16 inch TRD off-road specific wheels finished in bronze they are wrapped in some beefy rubber 265 70 series Goodyear Wrangler tires and this also solves a complaint that I had last year the one that I reviewed before it looked like more of a road ready truck but this this looks like it's ready to chew up the dirt now, because this is an SR5, and of course that means it is nowhere near as loaded as something like a TRD Off-Road or a TRD Pro, well, features aren't exactly the biggest priority. And if you are going to get into this thing, you need to lower your expectations a little bit because first off, there is no advanced keyless access to this, just the standard Toyota key. You got lock, unlock, and panic, and that is it. Everything else also follows the basic name of the game. You've got body colored side view mirrors with the LED turn signals, this one is an optional extra with the tech package, includes blind spot monitoring with rear cross traffic alert. And also if you wanna customize things even further for about 500 bucks, you can get a set of adjustable roof rails that will actually swing up and out and then lock themselves back into place. I kind of feel like I've seen these from other manufacturers. I think Subaru had something pretty comparable to that, but nevertheless, I think it's neat that they didn't include fixed crossbars that these can actually be adjusted. And then that means you have even more capabilities above on the roof. Now what amazes me more than anything is that even though this truck is almost six model years old as it sits right now, it not only is still a very good looking truck, but still quite the capable one as well. The way I have this one sitting right now in this five foot bed, you have a max payload of 1155 pounds. Not to mention with all Tacomas coming standard with the class four tow hitch, seven pin connector, and basically an off-road ready towing package on board as standard standard, you can tow up to 6,400 pounds with the trail edition that I have here. Now, obviously that can be greater uh, or less depending on the cab configuration, bed, engine, I mean, a whole host of factors. But design-wise, I mean, I think, I think it is getting a little long in the tooth. I mean, I like the design of the taillights. This one here has incandescent lights for both your main bulbs and your reverse lights and turn signals. The rest of the goodies though, you have blacked out badges and a new trail badge down here at the bottom, which does not not look like something that was grabbed off an auto parts store shelf. I love the nod to the uh, sort of Tundra tailgate here with Tacoma stamped across the rear tailgate. You also have more blacked out on the V6 badge here. This one also includes a couple of little extras including the rear park assist as you can see down there. And for an extra $300, and to be honest, I think this is completely idiotic, you get a bed step. Now, I know not everybody is as tall as me as I'm over six feet tall, but at my height, I can easily reach up over the back bed of this truck and grab whatever it is I need out of the bed. 
in only certain situations. You'll see what I mean here in a bit, but you also notice we have the onboard lockable storage in the back bed as well. Of course, the driver's side here not only has a couple of cup holders in it, well, actually both sides do, but as you can see by the little snowflake here, this side actually doubles as a cooler. You can open it up, you can put your beers, sodas, Capri Suns, whatever you want in there, and there actually is a drain plug down at the bottom that allows you to drain out the water, which uh, somebody forgot to do in this case, but nevertheless, I mean, it's ready to hit the trail or even the beach. And when it comes to actually putting your stuff into the bed, well, first of all, the tailgate's not gonna break your knees if you drop it all the way down, because as you can see, it's nice and damped. And as you can see, the width does decrease a good bit. Again, thanks to that onboard storage that we have back here. But also, if you're looking to power some external accessories, for example, this Tacoma as an option, or actually I believe a standard, comes with a 120 volt household style outlet plug here in the back as well. But apart from that, being that this is a little bit more of a basic Tacoma. There's nothing like LED bed lighting or anything like that, but you also do have some nice little hooks back here on the side as well. So you can definitely tie your stuff down what little things you can actually fit in that more narrow space back there. Now you're probably thinking at this point, okay, they went to such great lengths to change a bunch of stuff on the outside. They must have done something on the inside as well, right? Well, uh, Unfortunately, no. The inside of the Trail Edition is almost exactly the same as you'd find on any other SR5. You've got the black cloth seats in here. You've got the tan stitching, which is only available on the Trail Edition. You've got a powered driver's seat, which does include lumbar, which is always nice, but you want things like leather, uh, heated seats? Nope, neither of those exist in this. And I mentioned earlier things like the steering wheel is absolutely giant. This was taken directly out of the prior generation Tundra, and you can see it because it is way too big a steering wheel to be in a smaller truck like this. The steering column, it's manual tilt and telescope, and you actually have a couple of little switch gear pieces. You can turn on the rear cab lights or just turn on the uh, exterior lights in general. You have the auto high beam assist, and you also have the button to turn on or off for at least very, uh, the wattage on that little 120 volt uh, alternating current outlet that you have in the back. But aside from the fact that the interior is based on a much less expensive truck, the Trail Edition Tacoma's interior, and really any Tacoma's interior for that matter, is just so straightforward and so simple. And I love that about what Toyota has done with this truck. There's not a whole lot of excess anything really anywhere. I mean, you look at the steering wheel, I can't tell if this is leather or if this is plastic, but uh, it kind of feels like pleather to me, to be honest with you. But nevertheless, all the buttons are kind of old school Toyota switch gear. And I actually like that. The cruise control is a little stock that kind of hangs off the back of the wheel. You've got the little button that looks like the pages of a book. That's for controlling the little display up here in the middle of your gauge cluster. Same thing with the aero pad and the back button. You have the distance sensor and lane keep assist over here on the right. And then over on the Left, it's all your radio controls, mode or mute. You've got voice recognition, volume control, seek track, and hands-free Bluetooth, just to name a few. And you know, keeping on the theme of simplistic, the infotainment system in here is a little bit dated looking in certain areas, but you know what? It's not half bad for being such a small pickup truck. To start with, you've got an eight inch screen here in the middle, which includes in this case, the dynamic navigation system. And honestly, this system is just way too old. The touch responsiveness is, um, well, it's subpar to say the least. And not to mention, when I use things like the voice recognition to actually put in an address or something, it is hopelessly unreliable. I would much rather go Go into the menu setting where I've got destinations, audio, Bluetooth, telephone, Entune, App Suite, and so on, and go into Android Auto, which you have Android Auto and Apple CarPlay compatibilities in here, and I would just rather use my Google Maps. It's much easier to use, it's much more reliable, and crucially, it saves you a service cost because this updates with your phone, not with the truck. In other words, you know, you do have a backup camera, which also seems to be of half decent quality here. You know, the camera quality itself is a little bit grainy, the guidance lines kind of look a little bit cheap, but you know, it's it gets the job done. You've got the rear park assist, as I mentioned before, so of course you get the not only visual, but audible warnings as well if you get too close to something, which also side note that little red line right there just in case you were curious that measures out about a foot from the back of the truck so if that gives you any indication of how far out this camera can actually go 
Now, things like the subpar navigation and the sort of diminutive size of the screen may be a little bit more of a complainable factor. Well, those of you who are music heads like me may not exactly like the stereo system in this one either. Now, there is a premium audio package that you can get for this thing, or at least a package that includes it, but unfortunately, we don't have that one available today. So instead, we have the SR5's standard six-speaker Toyota brand audio system. And um, I mean, when you turn it on, it doesn't sound great, but it's not the worst thing I've ever heard either. But before we move on, one of my favorite things about the Tacoma is that there are so many accessories that you can put under the hood, on the inside, on the outside, pretty much anywhere on this truck. You can sort of nickel and dime your way up the price tag ladder just a little bit. Now, I did mention that on this test truck, we have things like the TRD air uh, intake. We have the TRD exhaust. We have the roof rails on the outside. We have little things like that. But the only accessory that I found on this one on the inside is this a trd leather wrapped shift knob and this thing just like a lot of other parts of this truck is chunky it just feels so big in your hand yes i know that's what she said but anyways it just feels right actually it's got kind of a little pistol grip even though there's no trigger here to move the gears around but for about 140 dollars, it's actually not a bad buy uh, to accessorize for the inside of your tacoma now, because we also have the double cab configuration for our Tacoma tester, when you open the back door, you actually are looking at a pretty decent amount of space in here. And it's enough space for me to at least store a few things, that's for sure. But before we climb in, there is actually one cool thing. And speaking of storage, you pull this little tab right here, and behind the seat, there is actually a little storage cubby that you can put, I don't know, like paperwork, something like that. It's neat, you know, it's behind both of the seats, but one thing that would be cool is to actually see kind of the front of these seats lift up so you could actually put stuff back here. I don't know, kind of like a, a mini version of the Tundra, but getting in the back, well, um, yeah, no. I mean, I'm sitting directly behind myself and you could see how far my knees are pushed into the driver's back. Now, obviously this all depends on if you either have a taller passenger in the back or perhaps you have a taller driver. Um, but I mean, you might have a little bit more leg room if you somehow become a little shorter, but headroom is not too bad. But one of the other things, and I noticed this also up in the front, as I mentioned before, the floor on this thing is way too high. So my knees are almost about where the driver's shoulders would be. So that is a little bit of an inconvenience, but you do have at least a couple of cup holders here. And I mean, overall, I wouldn't mind sitting back here, but only on short trips. But unfortunately, guys, this now concludes our review and drive of the 2022 Toyota Tacoma SR5 Trail Edition. As much grief as I gave this thing for being quite thirsty on gas and being a little bit more pricey than what you would normally expect to pay for one of these, well, to be honest, it's a very, very solid package, especially if you're not wanting to look at something as expensive as a TRD Pro, TRD Off-Road, and perhaps you just don't need the options in general. It is definitely a fun way to get around. But anyways, guys, if you enjoyed this video, or perhaps you learned something today, give it a thumbs up. And also while you're at it, don't hesitate to hit that subscribe button because trust me, I do appreciate the support and it is beneficial to the both of us at the end. But at the end of the day though, my thanks goes right back to Toyota USA for lending us this Tacoma for a whole week to drive around. But at the end of it, guys, I hope you enjoyed the review and I will see y'all next time. Take care everybody and stay safe.